wondered what happens to all those paper products, cans and bottles that you put into your recycling bin? Where does all those products go? They come right here to the SP Recycling Facility located on Waldo Road and Northeast 63rd Avenue. To find out more, I toured the facility with Solid Waste Inspector Phil Amerson. Phil, can we start off a little bit by just uh, uh, telling us a little bit about this particular facility? Yes, Bob. We're here at the SP Recycling Plant. Uh, SP leases this particular facility from Alachua County. This is where all residential recycling comes after it's collected from curbside by Waste Management Incorporated. Waste Management Incorporated and the City of Gainesville have a contract whereas they pick up all recycling from the curbside and deliver it here to SP. SP in turn and Waste Management have a contract to where SP will process all of those recycled goods. Now we've got about uh, 30, no, so, excuse me, 27,000 households here in Gainesville to whom we provide uh, trash collection services, is that correct? That is correct. And out of that number, approximately three quarters or 20,000 or so households actually participate in our recycling programs. Yes. Now, I, I know because I've got two little bins in front of my house, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what kinds of products go into each type of bin? Yes, uh, each, re each household is presented with two different bins. One of the bins being orange is for the collection of newspapers, magazines, catalogs, phone books, brown paper bags, corrugated cardboard, and now we're glad to have mixed office paper and junk mail included. Now, I'm sure that there's a few paper items that we should also avoid putting into the recycling bin. Can you tell us what those are? Oh, yes, I can. One of the main items is pasteboard. Sometimes people refer to it as paperboard. These are things such as drink boxes come in, uh, alcoholic beverages and sodas, uh, as well as cereal boxes and shoe boxes. These particular uh, fibers in this particular type of product are just not conducive to recycling at this time. Uh, other items are contaminated items, such as pizza boxes. Even though these are corrugated, and the difference between pasteboard and corrugated is the wavy material that's in between the layers. Mm -hmm. So the pasteboard won't have that. Any, all of these paper products should be clean uh, and non-contaminated with food. So therefore, uh, paper towels, napkins, things that you might typically use in a kitchen setting would not be conducive to put it into the orange bin. I see. Now, we also have blue bins, and I know that we can put in uh, items like aluminum cans and, paper, uh, and uh, plastic bottles. Can you tell us some of the other items that we can put in the blue bin? Yes, sir. The blue bin is for your co-mingled items, just as you had said. Uh, one of the things also is tin cans. Again, being rinsed in water, being cleaned, uh, they can be placed in there as well. Broken glass is one of the things we don't want to place into their uh, bin because of safety reasons, of course, and spillage on the ground. Household uh, cans of aerosol in nature that are not hazardous materials can also be placed into the blue bin. Now you've got mounds of materials here that uh, you've collected. It's brought here to this site. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how it's sorted out and, uh, and what happens to it when it leaves this site? Yes, I can. This particular facility has what's called a dual sorting system. All your paper products are recycled on one particular assembly line. The other products, the commingled products, are sorted on another assembly line. And each assembly line is set up specifically on how these particular items are processed. And what happens to these uh, items once they are processed, Phil? All right. Uh, your, all your commingled items, such as paper, cardboard, aluminum, the steel, uh, are all bundled into large bundles and they're placed and they're shipped in, particular in the region. Your glass is loosely loaded into trailers and they're also shipped away to different places for further processing. And when these, uh, when these items are sent away for further processing, oftentimes they're made into different types of products. That is correct. Could you tell us a little, about, a little bit about some of the other products that are made with recyclable materials? Yes, I can, such as uh, number one uh, bottles, plastic bottles. They can actually uh, remain pure and can be turned around and recycled right back into plastic bottles again. Uh, different plastics for different things. Your number two and number three, uh, they can be a variety of things. Flower pots, food containers, toys, and believe it or not, they could even be made into car parts and lumber. Wow. You mean the car that I drive may have some recycled that's parts? That's absolutely in. right. And that's interesting. I didn't know that. And the other thing about recycling is that it keeps a lot of uh, materials out of our landfill. And uh, in addition to that, it, uh, I guess, saves energy, doesn't it? It does. Aluminum cans, for an, for an example, can be returned right back on the shelf within a 60-day time period. And aluminum, those aluminum cans will have the exact same quality as, as the original product. 
Newspaper can be put right back into newspaper products, cardboard back into pasteboard, and, and uh, paper, brown paper bags, and glass, well, right back into glass again. Phil, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we go, is there anything you'd like to tell our viewers about what they should do with regard to recycling? Yes, I believe all our residents should be very involved in our recycling process. It is a partnership between the city and our facilities that, solid waste facilities that help us and help our residents pick up our garbage, as well as yard trash bulk and our recycling. Thank you for doing your part to keep Gainesville clean and green, Phil. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for having me. After parting ways with Phil, I caught up with the city's recycling program coordinator, Joni Rowland to find out more about how businesses recycle. And right over here too. We've already learned, Joni, quite a bit about residential recycling. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about the commercial recycling program. Okay, the uh, commercial recycling is mandatory. The mandatory commercial recycling ordinance was established in 1997. So how do commercial businesses go about actually recycling? Well, the uh, the commercial businesses will choose a vendor and receive a container from that vendor. And if they have a budget that concerns them, then they can self-recycle by collecting the recyclables and bringing them to the transfer station, so long as they have their receipt. Joni, say I'm a resident uh, at one of the apartment complexes here in Gainesville, and I'm interested in participating in the recycling program, but my apartment complex uh, doesn't seem to have the appropriate recycling bins available. What do I do? Well, it's, it's usually a simple matter of asking your apartment manager where the recycling station is located. Since all apartment complexes have already been inspected and are in compliance, um, after you've spoken with your manager and he has told you, he or she has told you that there is no recycling available, then you would call the City of Gainesville's Office of Recycling, which is 334-2130. And I understand you also have a website as well? Yes, we do. And uh, I think that uh, if anybody has any questions, there's mm -hmm. also a, a bunch of information about how they can get involved in recycling and our various recycling programs. That's, Is that correct? That's correct. Well, Joni, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming to the City Show today. I've learned a lot of information about recycling, and I love these snazzy vests that we're wearing. Well, thank you, Bob, for your interest in recycling. <laughs>